Well, hi everyone out there. It's Alex coming to you from the, the Golfist. And it was the nerve center of my 2021 PGA Show virtual experience. And I uh, just want to do a little bit of recap for Friday. Uh, so anyways, typically speaking, when I'm on the show floor on Friday, I never really have appointments booked. It's all about running and gunning that last day and meeting a whole bunch of other new booths that maybe I you know, had an oversight of before. Uh, so it was more of the same where my day was relatively empty and relatively, relatively still, uh, but I still managed to fill it up pretty good yesterday. Um, so even though I was late to it, I started off by going into a room with the adaptive golfers and uh, Gianna Rojas was the one that was leading that, that session. And again, I was late and I wish I would have got there much sooner. I'm hoping to have a follow-up conversation with, with her or somebody from the organization. But, um, you know, adaptive golfers, you know, we're talking about accessibility. Golf is at a point in the industry where, you know, we really should be making it accessible to everybody, especially those that are not able-bodied. Um, these athletes, and I call them athletes, they just amaze me. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, I, I do draw inspiration from them. So, you know what, if you're ever out there and you're taking the game way too seriously and you're getting all up in a huff, just remember, about these golfers as well you know like they're uh they're unbelievable so i followed that up with with a meeting uh i had a meeting with james lynn who is the founder of altaz inc and he is producing laser range finders uh, these range finders uh to me i saw the prototype it looks very impressive and the one thing that i really like is the fact that instead of looking through the peephole which you still can for for your viewfinder you can uh, actually flip open a screen like you would see on a DSLR camera or a camcorder and you look through that instead as well. So um, the plan is down the road for them to release this rangefinder. It's going to be in that 340 range I believe it is. So right in between say a $600 model and something in that lower 250 range. And down the road there are plans to include um, you know the uh, GPS capability on this as well. So keep an eye on that. Uh, had a very good conversation with, with, with James and uh, yeah, you know, a pretty impressive product. Uh, I also sat in for the ING Media Awards. Uh, I belong to the International Network of, of uh, Golf and uh, well, I was shut out, out of the awards and that's okay. Uh, thought I really had a good chance with the one article that I submitted or actually two of them, but uh, they obviously fell, fell short. And uh, that's okay, but but that said, congratulations to all the winners. Um, you know, you, you all deserve it. So, congrats. Uh, moving on from that, I also had a conversation with Block UV. Uh, Karina Baiton, or Biton, uh, she is the, uh, the president of the company. And this is a company that, um, you know, they're very much a lifestyle brand, more so than just a golf brand, as they produce apparel for kids, women, men, and we're talking about uh, of clothing that protects you from the sun to the nth degree. They don't, you, they don't dip their, their apparel into, or fabrics into um, something that's gonna eventually wash off over time. And it was very impressive, that conversation. I'll be receiving a sample piece to uh, try out, test and review. So Karina, thank you very much. And I also learned in that meeting one very scary stat and that is this did you know that one in five americans die from skin cancer just a crazy number a number that i i still can't get wrapped around my head so um crazy and they also have a initiative that they run in may it's called melanoma, melanoma may and uh keep an eye on details regarding that initiative it's a fantastic one it's all about educating people not just golfers but people about the sun, skin cancer, and you know, any other of the adverse effects we get from that big yellow meatball in the sky. Uh, I just gotta check my schedule here real fast, make sure I'm not leaving out anybody. Um, I took part in, in a couple sessions uh, throughout the week, and actually it was just yesterday, I shouldn't say throughout the week, it was just yesterday, and it was called the uh, Midday Stretch, and it was actually a, a series or a session, set of sessions put on by TPI, just getting you stretching at your desk or getting up and making a few, you know, golf related stretches and 
just stretching out. Admittedly, I wish I would have done those a lot sooner and all throughout the week. Uh, I wish they were on demand so I could go back and watch them, but uh, I don't think they are. So anyways, we'll, we'll get through it. That was pretty cool though. I liked it. Uh, and then, uh, later on in the afternoon, uh, about three o'clock-ish or so, I had a meeting with Luc Benoit, and he is the founder of Ripstick. Uh, so what, what is Ripstick? Well, it's a company that wants you to reach your potential, and I gotta stop for a second and just say that it wasn't Luke that I met with, but it was one of the co-owners, and that was Scott, and Scott, I apologize, I can't remember your last name off the top of my head, so I apologize. Um, but Ripstick is a, is a speed trainer. Golf is all about getting speed. It always has been. Yes, there are other ways to get distance, maximize distance with proper launch conditions, spin, smash factor. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to have a little bit of speed there as well. I mean, talking about Bryson DeChambeau and Kyle Berkshire and, you know, anyone else like that. Uh, notwithstanding, it, it's important for all of us to develop a little bit of club head speed, right? Uh, you know, it's always nicer to have one less club than you did, say, the year before. So, Ripstick is a is a speed trainer, but it's a little bit different than what's out there. As opposed to having, say, three or four clubs with you for your, you know, for your training session, you have one club, and there's multi multiple weights they can put into it to increase the the weight of the of the head, and ultimately get that you know, those fast twitch muscles going as well. But there's more to it than just that. Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're gonna be offering, um, you know, I think it was a, a month subscription with a personal trainer through their website as well to get you headed on the right road. So they're just more, they're, they're more than just telling you what to do. You go swing and that's it. There, there's more to the product. So um, they have 20 PGA Tour guys right now in their stable. And uh, it's a really cool looking product and I'm looking forward to putting it to the test. And uh, Scott, as I recall, you're from Rochester, Minnesota. So another Minnesota company, perhaps. Um, so Scott, thank you for your time yesterday. Really appreciate that. And uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think what else I had. I'm just looking here real fast. Uh, yeah, uh, I ended my, my PGA show talking to Rob Lang of Indie Golf and I hope I don't say your name wrong, David, but David Brino. And uh, oh my goodness, uh, Indie Golf, I've been keeping tabs on them since about 2017. Um, they've brought out great putters. They've brought out some wedges that, in my experience, have felt very good. Although my experience with them has been limited to the PGA Show Demo Day. And they're bringing out another new wedge again this year. Um, the milling on this thing is amazing. The whole surface area, area of the face is, is milled. And uh, yeah, it's a great looking stick, but more importantly, they also have a non-conforming head as well for those golfers that just wanna go out there, have fun, and they're not worried about conforming equipment. Let's face it, it's a small percentage of golfers worldwide that really have to worry about conforming equipment. Basically, those golfers that perform in, uh, you know, say state amateur competitions uh, put on by their, their organizations or provincial golf associations like up here in Canada, the, uh, you know, the Golf Association of Ontario and so on and so forth. But they've also introduced another product and this is the uh, brainchild of, of David. Uh, it's called Scratch Stick. So essentially what you have is, um, I don't know, I guess it looked like it was about say 36 or so inches long. I don't know if, it's, if that's accurate. And he had basically um, like, a, like a meter stick or yard stick that uh, I'm just using that as a reference point, but it slides into this, uh, into a, another section of, of, the, of the scratch stick trainer. And you can use this for everything in your practice sessions, uh, like putting rails, you can, uh, there's a, a mirror on the one side of the, of the stick. Um, so you, you can roll your ball off there. So you're, you know, you know that you have a good track on your putts. Um, ball position, uh, alignment, everything. But there's more. You know, I feel like I'm on a television infomercial at the moment. But uh, you flip it over and uh, there's a mirror there and you can actually stick this thing into the ground as well. And you can document your, your practices uh, using your, your smartphone. 
Um, there's a strong magnet that hold that attaches to the, to the back of the phone, and uh, yeah, you're golden. You're laughing, and you can attach it to your golf cart, anything. So if you want to get video on the course, it's there waiting for you, and uh, you know it's a it's a fun product. You know I think it's going to be very effective, and I will be receiving one of those to review as well. So I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, in a nutshell, that was the uh, final day recap for Friday at the 2021 PGA Show. Stay tuned for a ton of content coming up yet uh, here at Until the Next Tee about the show. I'll be introducing you to a whole bunch of, uh, of the exhibitors that I talked to, apparel, company, apparel companies, training aids, video content from some of the golf manufacturers that were present that I had meetings with, and a whole lot more. So, signing off. For the last time, well, not quite the last time. I'm going to do one more recap, actually. Um, but anyways, signing off in regards to the Friday part of the virtual PGA show from Orlando, Florida, or not Orlando, Florida this year, from the golfers in the lovely, balmy St. Catharines, Ontario, where it's currently minus 10. It's Alex, and we'll see you on the next tee.